All right, hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this beautiful stylized wavy grass effect. Now this effect was actually shown to me by a user on my server that goes by the username of Feline Entity. They're quite well versed in the ways of Blender, but they put a particular emphasis on doing stylized work, and they're also an add-on developer. If you go to their Gumroad page, you'll find the Outline Helper add-on for Blender 2.8, which will help you generate non-destructive outlines for your characters. They really wanted to show off how to get this effect, but they didn't want to go through the hassle of making a tutorial, and that's where I come in. Now I'm going to show you how to achieve this effect by yourself, but if you look in the description, you'll find a link to Feline Entity's Gumroad. In there, you'll be able to pick up a package with demonstration files for this effect, and inside of those files, they will also tell you a few extra tips and tricks that I won't cover in this video, so I highly recommend you go and check it out. So anyway, let's begin. Okay, so we're starting off from my startup file, which will look a bit different to yours, but it doesn't really matter that much. What I'm going to do is just delete everything inside of the scene to start with. So I'm going to press Shift A, then create a plane. This will act as our ground, but we'll need to scale it up to get some nice coverage. If I press the N key to open up the side menu, and then in scale, I'm just going to click on the X and drag all the way down to Z, and then type in 10. So we've got uniform scale of 10 all across the plane. But now we've got the ground, we of course want to create strands that will act as our grass. Now a lot of people when they do wavy grass objects use planes, because when you're going to be instancing the object hundreds, possibly thousands of times across another object, you want it to be optimized, and we'll talk a bit about that later. But we're actually going to be using 3D meshes created from curves as our grass objects. And this is because we want to go for maximum stylistic fidelity. So I'm going to press Shift A, go down to Curve, and then choose Path. It'll be difficult to see because everything's bright, but if I grab the Z-axis handle and then move this up, keeping it snapped to the grid along the way by holding Control, then we can see it here above the plane. Now of course this infinitely thin strand isn't going to give us much to work with, so I'm going to go to the Curves tab, then I'm going to go to the Geometry section, then under Bevel you see the Depth value, so we're going to increase this until we get something a little bit thick. I think I'll go for 0.5. That seems like a good amount. Now this strand object is sideways, uh, but that's okay because we'll be able to reorient it when we come to setting up the particle settings for the plane. But one thing to keep in mind is that where this origin is, this is where this strand of grass is going to be duplicated into the plane. So of course we want to move the contents of this strand along the x-axis a bit. So if I go into edit mode, select all of these, pick the move tool, and then move them to the side, now you'd think moving it all the way until the origin is right at the end would be a good idea, but actually we're going to move it just so the origin is slightly inside of the mesh here. And this is because when the strand of grass comes to wave in the wind, we're going to need a little bit of flex room. So anyway, now we're going to build the shape. So I'm going to select the end point here, hold Alt and press S and scale it all the way down. And I'm going to do a little bit for the next one. And then I'm going to leave it a bit chunky in the middle. But for this very end point back here, I'm actually going to scale this down a little bit. So this is going to be one of our three-dimensional strands of grass. But we want to create some variation, so I'm going to go into object mode, duplicate this about three more times. And now we're going to make some subtle changes just so the grass looks a bit varied even when it's not waving. So I'm just going to move some points around. You can also do some rescaling if you want, but that's entirely up to you. Okay, so now we've got our variations. But now that these are prepared, how do we get these onto the plane? Well, this is where particle systems are going to come in handy. If we click on the plane and then go to the Particle Properties tab, I'm going to press the plus icon, then I'm going to choose Hair. Now you see these guidelines for all of these strands here, but this is not what we're going to need. Basically, to get these objects onto the plane, we need to tell the particle system to look at a collection of objects and then duplicate them randomly. What this requires is that we actually put these objects into a collection beforehand. So I'm going to select all of them by shift clicking, press M, choose new collection, and then type grass. Then if I click on the plane again, if we go down to the render section, then at the value render as, we want to change it from path to collection. Then you'll see down here there's a value called instance collection. We click on that and choose grass. Now you'll see that our objects have been duplicated across the plane, but of course something is wrong. They're all facing the wrong way. So how do we fix this? Well, all we need to do is tick the object rotation value. 
okay, that's all well and good, but it's a little bit sparse at the moment. So how do we make this a bit more full? Well, I'm going to scroll up and change the number from 1000 to 10,000. Now, this is where I should give you a warning about optimization. Because we haven't reduced the number of polygons inside of the original grass objects, and we're duplicating them many times, this may not be appropriate for your computer. But there are a couple of things you can do. First of all, if you look at the curve settings for the individual objects, we can reduce the resolution preview value to something like well, all the way down to one. The object will become much more lower poly, so you can do this for all of these to reduce the amount of vertices in the scene. But because I've got a powerful computer and we're going for full fidelity, I'm going to keep that up. Another thing you can do is reduce the number of the particle objects. So if I set this to 500, you'll see this happens. But then there's something interesting down in the children section of the settings. If you open this submenu, you can choose Interpolated, and it will basically average out between the points of the duplicated particle objects. In here, there are extra settings for you to play with, including clumping, but we're not going to focus on that right now. So I'm going to disable this interpolation and reset the number to 10,000. Okay, so now that we've got our objects duplicated on the plane, how do we get a wavy effect? Well, the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a force field of some kind, and then we're going to rotate it around in a loop. Now this loop will be seamless, so you'll be able to play it forever and just watch as the grass waves without jittering or ending abruptly. The way to do this is to create a pivot point. So we're going to start off by pressing Shift A, then going to Empty, and then Plane Axes. I will raise this above the plane, keeping it to the grid, just so we can see it better. Then I'm going to press Shift A again, go to Force Field, and Turbulence. And I will raise this again into the same place, but then I'm going to move this out to the side on the Y axis. Now you'll notice that as I move it, the strands of grass are also wiggling about, but it's very noisy. The way we solve this noise is to play around with some of the physics settings. So with the turbulence selected, we're going to go down to the physics tab. Then under size, we're going to increase this. And what you'll notice is that as we increase the value, the waviness becomes much less noisy and much more representative of a light breeze. So I'm going to set this to 8. But as we move this around, we get the feeling that it's a little bit weak. So we can increase the strength of this by changing the strength value appropriately. So I'll put this up to something like 5. So now as I move this around, you'll see we get something that's much more representative of a gust of wind blowing over the grass. Okay, so let's loop it. Now you don't need to do any animation with the timeline, but you do need to increase the number of frames that are available, and I'll explain to you why in a minute. So see at the moment my start and end frames in the timeline are 1 and 300. We're going to need to set this to 360. And the reason is because we'll want 1 degree of rotation per frame. Now if I click on the empty pivot object again, press the end key, and then take a look at where our Z rotation value is, we can do a cool trick to automatically get a full rotation. So what we need to do is click on this value, then type in hashtag frame forward slash, which also means divided by 180, and then the star symbol, which means multiplied by pi, and then press enter. You'll notice that this field has now gone a pinky color, or depending on your theme. And if I scrub the timeline, you can see that our pivot object is rotating. But hold on, the grass isn't moving. And why is that? That's because we didn't parent the force object to the pivot object. So if you choose the force one, then choose the pivot object, then press Ctrl and P, then choose object keep transform, it's now become parented to the pivot object. So as we rotate this, the force object moves as well. And this means that as we play the timeline, the force object rotates around slowly, and consequently the field of grass is now moving. Okay, cool, so we've got this effect going, but what do we do for shading? Well, before we jump into shading, there's one thing I want to change in this file to make sure we get the proper colors coming through. If you go to the render settings, enter the color management section, then under view transform, change it from filmic, or whatever you've got it set to, to standard. This will basically ensure that the colors shine through properly. And for look, you can choose anything you want, but I like going for a high contrast compared to a low one. Okay, now I'm going to pause the timeline, because we don't need this slowing us down while we're making edits. I'm going to open the shader editor, go to the object graph, then I'm going to choose one of the strands of grass up here. I'll just choose this one, then press New. Now, because we're making something completely stylized, we don't need the principal BSDF shader. We're going to make a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. Then we're going to take the UV value and plug it into the vector input. Now we're going to create a gradient texture and plug this vector into here. 
And then we're going to put a color ramp in between the gradient texture and the material output node and plug them in like so. What you'll see here on the object is that we now have a gradient going from black to white. And as I slide the handle, you can see how the effect changes. So this is what we're going to use to compose our color. So if I press the plus button and go for a sort of mild blue, go to the end, choose something a bit more cyan. And I don't want the bottom to be completely black, so I'm going to go for a bit of a darker blue like so. So that's quite a nice gradient. We can have unique variations for each of these different strands, but I'm just going to copy over the material. So I'll select each of these and then select our original one, press Control L and choose materials. And you'll notice that this has also been automatically replicated to our field below. I might move this gradient up just a tiny bit. But now we want to do the ground material. So if I click on the plane again, press new, get rid of the principled BSTF, add a regular RGB because we don't need all the data coming from the principled, attach it to surface. And then I want to make sure that the ground is roughly the same color as the bottom of this strand. So while I'm hovering over this color box, I'm going to press and hold down the E key. Then I'm going to hover over the strand. You'll see that I've got the eyedropper tool. Then I will click and it will automatically assign the color to the color box. So now we've got a deep blue as the bottom of our ground. So if I zoom in here and then play the timeline again, you'll see that we've got this nicely stylized waving grass effect. So that's how you put it together. Now, of course, you have complete control over the strength of the force field, the color variation, the shape of the strands, etc. And because they're 3D objects, we can rotate around, have a look from above, and it all works perfectly fine. So have fun playing around with this effect and make sure to go over to Feline's Gumroad page to download the extra resources. There'll be some other cool tips and tricks in there that will show you some extra things you can do with this effect. So thanks for watching, I hope you found this interesting. Feel free to join our Discord server to take part in discussions, share your work and get sneak previews of upcoming projects. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.